All right, this is a uh, video two in a two-part uh, series of videos on repairing cassette tapes. And uh, so the previous one I did was on uh, screwed together cassette shells. So uh, you can get two types of uh, cassettes, either they're screwed together. If you can see in the corners there, there's uh, screws that actually screw them together. So uh, they're easy to undo. They're actually, uh, I find screwed cassette shells to be much superior to, uh, to welded shells or glued together shells. Um, but unfortunately, uh, it's about a 50-50 draw as to whether your tapes are either screwed or, or uh, welded together if you're buying pre-recorded cassettes out there. So um, I was out walking the dog uh, as I mentioned in my previous video with my Walkmans and uh, that's where I sort of I've got 1500 tapes I got to get through to find out if they're all working good or not and I've found a few that are uh, not working well and usually what it is is uh, from uh, misuse or mishandling of cassettes or uh, improperly storing cassettes uh, a lot of people leave them in cars in the old days. They used to use them in the cars and uh, you get uh, sunny days and a lot of heat. And so um, and UV light are really not good on these things. Um, this shell actually looks in very, very good shape. But when I played it, it warbled just like my other screwed shell tape did. Uh, this is Uriah Heap uh, Abominog. And uh, so yeah, I was walking the dog and playing it and it was unlistenable. Um, it just warbled, it, uh, it was sounded terrible. Uh, I think the uh, it was improperly stowed and therefore needs to be replaced. So that's my solution. Um, generally, if the tape is bad, you throw it out. Uh, there's, there's no way around it. Um, you're, you don't want to ruin your good machines by playing crappy tape on them. And, uh, you know, uh, if you have a bad tape, you can usually shell salvage if the shells are in good shape, you can salvage them and uh, put a new tape inside and re-record over with the same program material if you have a good high quality cassette deck. So I've got a bunch of Nakamichi three head decks that I use to uh, make my tapes and they make outstanding quality tapes. Um, so if you replace the tape inside these shells, um, you know, they actually sound better when they, they were when they were new. So this was no exception. So what I'm going to do, obviously, um, with the screwed shell um, pre-recorded tapes, all you have to do is take the shell, you know, unscrew them, split it in half, put new tape inside, and then rebuild it like I showed in the previous video. In this case, you can't. So what you got to do is have a donor tape. And so I'm going to use the same type of tape. I've got a whole bunch of these that have been unused. Uh, Memorex DB60s. Uh, they're in really good shape and they actually record really well. I've got a whole hockey sock full of them. So they, I use those as my donor tapes. So what I do is um, somewhere around here. There we go. I've got a clamp. And what I do is take my donor tape, put it off on an angle, and... I use my little clamp here to clamp down the cassette because as you'll see I'm going to manually transfer the tape between this and this. So um, let's just get that screwed on and tight and secure. So the clamp gets the, uh, so this doesn't wiggle and doesn't move. You want to do it too tight so that you warp the shell or anything. You just want it nice and tight and snug so that uh, when you're uh, taking the tape off the reel that it's not going to shimmy and, and move or, or whatever. Um, what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to move the camera so you're closer in. You can see better what's going on. All right, back at it. So uh, hopefully this gives you a better uh, vantage point from uh, what, you're, uh, what I had before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my trusty uh, precision tweezers here and I'm going to pull out uh, the leader on this tape 
because I'm going to take this tape and I'm going to transplant it into that. So what I'm going to do is use my razor blade. We're going to cut off the tape from where we're going to use it. And because I'm going to be winding this, I'm going to just pull, pull the leader tape out here. And this tape is going to be, basically the shell is going to be garbage. So all I got is my tape uh, out here. And what I've got to do now is I've got to take all of the tape, except for the leaders, out of this tape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the tape out of this one. So this is the donor. This is the rece receiving tape, the one that I'm trying to salvage. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have pulled out the leader now. And if you can see, I'm just going to cut it off at the very end. And we want to save all this leader, so I'm going to just fold it back over here. And now, using the same te technique as I did in my previous video with the, uh, when I'm taking tape off the uh, cassette, I'm just going to tape this down just so this doesn't start uh, flying around when I start removing the, uh, the tape. And then I'm going to use my price tags that I've that I got at Staples. These I find have been handy for any of this kind of work. I'm using it as a sticker, I'm going to actually take this tape, which is the garbage tape, and we're going to put it onto my. Uh, screwdriver bit and as I mentioned in the previous video uh, if you haven't watched it um, these are 3d printed um, tape winding uh, bits that I made on uh, you can download them on thingiverse here's a blue one that I that I printed out right here and they fit perfectly within the uh, within the shells of these uh, cassette tapes and you put it on your put it on as a bit in your your uh, drill driver here and you can wind the tape so see you can unwind wind it and there you go so it's a handy little device the uh, if you don't have access to a 3d printer you can also use these uh, T45 torque bit, Torx bit, bits that you can get at any tool shop or order them online from uh, Amazon or something like that. And uh, T45 is a perfect size for using on a, on a drill bit to wind tapes as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that uh, price tag and I'm going to just tape it onto the bit just to start it out. So right now all I'm going to do is use it to uh, unwind the tape out of the shell. And you can do it at pretty high speed, as you see. Oops, and off angle, as soon as you get off, you get the tape to it, it will cause the tape to uh, jitter. And as you get towards the end, you just slow it down. And then you'll see the leader come out of the uh, tape once I've got it wound all the way. I'm getting there. A lot of tape to come off these things. There's the leader. Okay. And then we're going to trim that off at the leader as well, using our trusty razor blade. There we go. And all this tape is now garbage. 
there you go so uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to I've got side two up I could flip it it doesn't really matter because you got to wind the tape anyway to, to the long side to uh, record it so it's a 50 50 proposition so again what you're gonna do is you're gonna use your splicing block which is here these you can get available online uh, a bunch of bunch of places sell them and you get them nice into the groove there oh, it's a little bit too long here it's hard to see these through these clear ones oops there we go we use our trusty There we go, we cut it flat. Throw out the little piece there. And I want to make sure this is, you know, I crunched that up a bit, but we got lots and lots of tape here, so we don't, it doesn't matter. So let's just trim it there. And making sure that the back side is up on your, uh, in your splicing block, back side of the tape. So you're actually taping it on the back side. And get nice and flat in the groove. And then what I do is I just put the point down there so it doesn't, uh, if you get a dull razor blade, sometimes it'll drag the tape down into the into the slot there, which you don't want to do. This one's pretty sharp, and there we go. So there's the little bit that we just cut off. And now the two ends are flush to each other, perfectly flush. And that's where we use our, you can use scotch tape. You don't have to have a, a block, like I'm showing you here, a uh, splicing block but it makes it a lot easier to uh, manage. You can use, also use scotch tape and use about less than, a little less than an inch on the, uh, on the splicing tape. And we're gonna put half on each side. And then we make sure the two are sealed together. Like that, and we're gonna pull from the leader side because it's stronger and thicker and then uh, we're going to make sure that that's down flush okay and what i do is i use this block here to just take this extra leader here so it doesn't get in the way of the winding process and uh, we can pull the tape off here now because i'm going to do this kind of by hand and as you see, I can wind the tape in and just making sure that there's no twists or turns and everything's flat on it. And then, and this is out of the way. So there, we're gonna use my trusty winding machine. Now we're gonna carefully, that's why we have the clamp here, so this doesn't get pulled into the uh, into the other uh, cassette here. And at about an angle like that, so you're minimizing the uh, the number of bends in the tape as it's coming off the reel and going onto this reel. Um, make sure we got the bit bit going the right direction, and there we go. I just lifted up off the uh, off the mat here, just a little elevation, so it's not binding on the, uh, the bit isn't going into the uh, into the table and then we start winding I'm trying to give you a so basically I'm winding it off this reel onto this reel and I'm sorry I'm, I'm sort of in the way here but Try to give you a little bit better of a. There we go.
And I'm just trying to, trying to do this at a weird angle, so, so you can see better. And that's the donor cassette making that noise, so it's not affecting the tape at all. Slow down as we get towards the end so we can catch the leader coming out. There's the leader. Now we're going to pull it back a little bit. Use our razor blade. Cut the tape off flat. And now. We're done with the donor tape because we've despooled the, uh, the entire tape onto this tape now. And you can see we now have an empty donor tape. And that's now garbage, or you can keep it for spare parts if you need uh, other cassette shells. I've got a whole bunch that I keep handy. Okay, so now we've got a leader and then the cassette portion or the tape portion. So once again, making sure you have the right end up, the flat, the back of the tape is up on your uh, splicing block. You want to make sure your tape is nicely in the grooves. I like the colored leader because then it's easier to see when it's uh, see-through like this. It's hard to see where the ends are. Okay, and there's the Here's the end, if you can see that. It's placed off. It's garbage. And we're going to put the back side of the cassette media, the tape media, up and into the groove, as you can see. And then we'll just cut that flat. And then the two ends will be perfectly uh, matched together and ready to splice. And so you take the residue of that one off. And we need our trusty splicing tape. Once again, you can use uh, scotch tape, but it's really hard to cut it to the right thickness with scotch tape. And where is my Folded that end over there, so cut that off. And there we go. There's our splicing tape. There we go. Once again, lifting from the leader side, because I find if I lift the tape side that sometimes these splices give way until they're nice and set. And there we go. Just clean the back side of this tape off. It's got some gunk on it. You don't want gunk going into your tape machines. And there you have it. There you have it. Your tape is now transferred from the donor tape onto that. So you got brand new tape in here, never been recorded on. And so now we go over to my uh, recording machines. And once again, what you want to do is you want to find the side that's the longest and record that one first. And then you trim off the excess uh, tape and then flip it over and do the short side and your tape should be just as long as it was when it was uh, uh, new and original.
and once again because it's got new new tape in it and you're taping it on a high quality Nakamichi tape deck it's going to actually sound better than a double speed uh, dubbed uh, pre-recorded tape ever did from the factory because these are all recorded at high speed at low quality so uh, when you make your own tapes like this the sound quality is um, much much better much greater than the uh, sound quality of when you buy these things new so over to the uh, the computer all right there's the uh, tape and uh, as I did with the last one I use my price uh, labels to uh, to uh, cover the uh, record holes to make sure your tape deck can go into recording mode and you can see it's actually wound to side two but in fact uh, here's the digital version of uh, Abominog and you'll note that a lot of cassettes um, what they do is they have a different order than say the CD or the LP version just because they want to make the, uh, the sides as even, even as possible so um, you can't go by the track listing on the CD. You actually have to use the uh, label on the cover to find out your track order to make sure that uh, the play order is consistent with the tape because not all tapes uh, play the same sequence as uh, CDs just to get the sides as even as possible. So here's side one. It's 20 minutes and 23 seconds long. And side two is 17 minutes and 45 seconds. So obviously on this one, we want to rewind to side one, record side one because it's the longer side. And then what we're going to do is we'll splice off the tape that's not used and then flip it over and finish off the recording like I did with the, uh, the other videotape. Um, same procedure applies here. So we'll make this recording. I won't go through all the details of how I make the recording. I've, you know, I use my trusty Nakamichi machine here, CR3A. And what we've got to do is rewind it to the other side, or to side one, and then we'll record side one, trim off the extra tape, flip it over, and record the shorter side. So uh, I won't bore you with all those details, and we'll pick it up once we uh, do the copy, or once the uh, recording is complete. You can see the uh, recording is... Uh, is or the rewinding is happening and it's very quiet so this one uh, much quieter tape and uh, it's rewinding nicely and there we go it's uh, I just started the tape recording and we'll monitor it all the way through and I'll cut this quick because I don't want to trip off any copyright claims all right this is the last song on side one and as you can see it's uh, playing out right now as soon as I have the last note, I'll wait about 10 seconds. You can see the noise is still going there, going strong. Okay. And then we'll stop it. And there you go. So there's side one recorded. And if you look out into the light, you can see there's a whole bunch of tape still left. And what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the remaining tape, splice it off to the leader that goes to this uh, hub, and then flip it over and record side two. And then you'll have a, uh, the right length tape, and it will sound much, much better than it ever did brand new. So here we go back into the, uh, the cave here. And what we'll do is we'll splice her down and I'll uh, put the camera into the tripod and you can see the uh, surgery as it takes place. Okay, there we go. So, what we're going to do, and we'll keep the tabs on here just because we got to still record side two. And we're going to pull out a bit of tape here. And remembering that this is the side that's recorded on, that's the side that's uh, not recorded on. So we're going to cut it here. That's the type of tape we're going to splice onto the end of the, uh, the leader on this, uh, this side. So we've got to get rid of all of that extra tape right now. So I just use one of my little trusty uh, price labels to tape it onto the, uh, my little fitting here. 
Oh, and I kind of forgot to hurry here. Tape this down so the tape doesn't go flying when you get to the end. And We'll slow down once we get to the end of the reel and watch the leader come out and then we'll keep the uh, as long a leader as we possibly can. There we go, there's the leader. We're going to trim that down. My trusty razor blade. And once again, all this tape that we wound off the thing, that's garbage. It's excess. I could have saved it if I wanted to make a smaller tape or something like that, but I never listen to short tapes. And we use our trusty splicing block here that I showed you before. There we go. And the idea behind this is just to cut the end off flat so it meets up with the uh, tape at a, at a right angle. Per perfect angle, I should say. There we go. And once again, back side up for the cassette or the, the tape and the leader. Otherwise, you'll get a twist in it and you don't want to have a twist in your... Uh, in your tape otherwise it'll gum up your machine there we go we'll just hold that down while we cut and then you can see the excess tape that's taken off of it and now the two are just butted up perfectly and we're going to use our trusty little uh, splicing tape, just eyeball about a little less than an inch. It's probably a little long, but better long than short. Then we tamp it down, make sure it's sticking. There we go. Pulling from the leader side. I'll just put it flat down and just make sure got a good, good uh, seal on that tape. And then we wind the tape back in. And now we're ready to record. These are perfect as uh, just hand winders. Some people use HB pencils. I find these are just the perfect, perfect for hand winding near the end. Okay, so there we have it. Side two is now ready to record. And we'll put that back in the machine and uh, finish off the tape. And there we have uh, side two. And it's very important that you check your track order, as I mentioned, because there's the cassette track order. Um, and you'll note that some songs actually that are on the CD, like Tin Soldier, for instance, are not on the cassette. Uh, that I can see. No, it's not on there. Same with the uh, demo versions that are uh, added on to the end of the CD version. So not all the songs are on the cassette that are on the CD. And they're in different orders just to uh, make the uh, two sides as close to the same length as possible. It's not always, there's still a couple of minutes uh, overlap. And so we'll start the tape off. I've got the tape in the, uh, in the deck over here. And so we'll start the tape deck recording. Give it about 10 seconds. And then... And there are the recordings. I've got the volume kind of turned down just so I wouldn't uh, 
trip things out and I will stop it here so I can monitor the recording and make sure it's good. And then we'll pick it up at the very end.